Make no mistake, people smuggling needs a global response. But I'm afraid we're still at a stage where the world needs to wake up to the severity of this challenge. It goes back to security. I was elected to deliver security for the British people. And strong borders are a part of that. Of course they are. But I say it again, security doesn't stop at our borders. And illegal migration is, without question, a massive driver of global insecurity. There is nothing progressive about turning a blind eye as men, women, and children die in the channel. True, he isn't wrong. There is absolutely nothing progressive about turning a blind eye as people die in the channel. But of course, he is the one who is turning a blind eye. He is offering, unironically, sticking plaster solutions to a problem that is entirely baked into Obviously, geopolitical instability that is caused by Western interventionism that causes a lot of these problems in the first place. And second of all, that's caused by our complete inability to open safe and regular routes for these people to come here to claim asylum. It's as simple as that. It's absolutely 100% as simple as that. There is a reason why Swella Bravman, when she was in the Home Affairs Select Committee, could not answer the question, how would somebody come here and claim asylum from somewhere where there wasn't an existing route already open? She couldn't answer it because there fucking isn't one. If there's anybody who can be blamed for people dying in the channel, I will squarely blame the government. I will blame you, Keir Starmer, and I'll blame Yvette Cooper, the Home Secretary, for both of these problems. And you don't advance the cause of global justice or, or compassion for those individuals to pretend that there is. This is a vile trade that must be stamped out wherever it thrives. And unless we bring all the powers we have to bear on this, in much the same way as we do for terrorism, then we will struggle to bring these criminals. It's going to be fun watching Keith try and out Kemi Kemi on this issue. Well, that's the irony, right? Is that what's going to happen? I can absolutely predict this to you for a T. Clip this, bookmark it, save it wherever you want. I guarantee this is exactly what's going to happen. They're going to talk big about Border Security Command. They're going to talk big about international agreements to stop the boats, right? They're going to talk big on how they are linking up with European leaders and how to deal with the migration crisis right and then every other week at prime minister's questions kemi badenock is going to say well you talk a big game on stopping the boats but the actual number of boats is continuing to increase or hasn't decreased enough she's going to ask those questions and keith starmer is going to say but we are going to be tough on the smuggling gangs this vile trade bunch of problem bunch of nonsense nothing with resembling any kind of progressive policy they won't open any safe routes for people to arrive here to claim asylum because they don't want to because they want to look tough on migration. They will fail to reduce the number of boat crossings and Kemi Badenoch will be the only person who wins from any of this interaction, apart of course from the smuggling gangs, which the Border Security Command won't tackle and they will make lots of money and people will still drown in the fucking channel. This will keep happening for the next five years and Kemi Badenoch will win this argument. She may not win the election, but will only have a political sphere that cares about demonising these people and the boat numbers and crossings will still increase. This Labour government is resetting the UK's whole approach to this challenge. No more gimmicks, no more gesture politics. Apart from border security commands 100% being a gimmick and a gesture. You're literally gesturing at being tough on migration. This whole speech is you being virtue signaling about how much you think that migrants are a national security threat. All you've done is gestures and virtue signaling throughout this entire speech and provided no concrete policy whatsoever. Especially not the only policy that we know would actually reduce the demand for the smuggling gangs, which is opening safe routes. No more irresponsible, undeliverable promises that almost by design seek conflict with other countries. We've turned the page on all of that because such promises are not worth the paper that they're written on. All they do is waste taxpayer money, destroy people's trust in politics as a force for good. So our approach is different. As I say, we're going to treat people smugglers like terrorists. So we're taking our approach to counter-terrorism which we know works, and applying it to the gangs with our new border security command. We're ending the fragmentation between policing, border force, and our intelligence agencies. 
recruiting hundreds of specialist investigators, uh, the best of the best from our National Crime Agency, Border Force, Immigration Enforcement, and the CPS and our intelligence agencies, all working together. We're making border protection an elite border force. This is nonsense. This is pablum. Oh, we're not going to do it with gimmicks, but we're an elite border force. That's not a gesture or gimmicks at all. No gestures or gimmicks to see here whatsoever, chat. If this sounds like a gimmick to you, then you must be wrong, because the sensible Sir Keir Starmer, previously Director of Public Prosecutions, don't you know, is saying it, therefore it must be serious grown-up politics and not indeed a bunch of nonsense scrawled on the back of a fact packet. And not just within our country. We're also working together with international partners, sharing intelligence and tactics. Earlier this year, I visited the headquarters of our National Crime Agency. I saw firsthand the ways we're already collaborating and what it takes to intercept, to disrupt and destroy these networks. There are so many tools at our disposal. We can seize their phones at the border, identifying and tracing smugglers, wiring payments. We've already trained sniffer dogs to detect the smell of dinghy rubber. I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. You're literally standing on the stage at the Interpol convention talking about sniffer dogs knowing the smell of dinghy rubber. I'm sorry, I'm sorry. Like, even when he's trying to be this kind of serious authoritarian, he sounds like a moron. What, the dogs are going to smell a dinghy coming across from France, right? We're going to have dogs stationed over uh, uh, the cliffs of Dover, just w catching the fumes of the dinghies as they waft from Calais. What happens after they sniff the dinghy? The Thunderbirds are called? No, the elite border security command will smash the gangs. How? We don't know, but it sounds cool, doesn't it? And as we understand how these gangs work, we can invest in new capabilities and enhance powers to smash them. So we're giving our new Border Security Command an additional £75 million of new funding on top of the £75 million we've already committed. This will support a new organised immigration crime intelligence unit. Hundreds of new investigators and intelligence officers backed by state-of-the-art technology. Remember, there's no money to keep your gran warm this winter. There's plenty of money to not open safe routes and instead try and catch the criminals who you've created a market for. Plenty of money for that. However, there is unfortunately no money. There's no money to keep your gran warm this winter. Sorry about that, Britain. Keir Starmer's too busy funding his gimmicks. Have I not considered that the frozen grannies and rubber sensitized puppies are the cops that have grown up politics? Oh dear. If you didn't laugh, you'd cry. But look. The only way to defeat this vile trade and save lives is to stop people being smuggled here in the first place. Opening safe and legal routes. Doing everything possible to deepen our cross-border cooperation. No, no, unfortunately not. Everything possible apart from cooperating over creating a safe route. Of course not. So international agreements matter. We have to use every tool that we have Apart from safe and legal routes. Operational, diplomatic, political, to join up our response. Because if together we can win this war against the people smuggling, then this gathering will have achieved a victory for humanity, every bit as significant as the Glasgow Climate Pact. You will have helped to smash the gangs, secure our borders, and save countless lives. And it's with that hope and in that spirit that I declare the 92nd General Assembly open. I just hate him. I hate him so much. Virtue signaling about how much, how many lives he's going to save while explicitly ruling out the single thing that he could do to explicitly save lives because he's a monster. I'm sorry, he's just a monster and I fucking hate him. Now, Yvette Cooper was on Good Morning Britain today to also discuss this issue and had some probing questions from Susanna Reid. Let's see whether or not these questions actually tackle the key problem here or whether or not she's going to parrot more right-wing rhetoric to go with the right-wing rhetoric from the government. Let's have a look. The point is a lot of people think we need a deterrent to stop 
illegal immigrants coming here. Why are so many? And again, they keep calling them illegal immigrants. There is nothing illegal about arriving here via small boat and claiming asylum. Nothing illegal about it. It is an irregular way of arriving, of course, and it would be illegal for them to arrive by small boat and to not claim asylum. But that's the way you arrive illegally, by not claiming asylum or, or alternatively, by outstaying an existing visa. Arriving here via small boat and immediately claiming asylum is perfectly legal. Coming here to the UK, is it because at some stage they're going to get looked after, housed, have some benefits, be supported and are unlikely, frankly, to be sent anywhere else? Well, we certainly have to improve returns and enforcement. And already over the summer, we've had a 23% increase uh, compared to last year. As a result of a lot of the work we've done, we've put up to a thousand additional uh, officers into the returns and enforcement programme. So that has increased returns you, yeah. over the summer. So tell us. So about that has increased returns, and that I think how many? that will start to feed through. By so how many? That's a 20. It's a 23% it's a increase over the summer, but the numbers aren't yet high enough. We have substantially got to increase that. We also have to speed up the asylum system. The decision making had collapsed. Mm -hmm. So of course, if people arrive and then can spend several years in a very expensive asylum accommodation with no decision being taken and no proper returns at the end of it, of course, that is a system that is chaotic and not working. But the other issue, I think, to go to the heart of your problem as well, the point you raised, is if the, there's no deterrent for the criminal gangs, they will just keep, make, keep making money. So they're making... Yeah, in order to deterrent to break the business model. Hundreds of millions of pounds putting people on these dangerous flimsy boats and they're getting away with it. So that's why we have to have the much stronger action with France, with Germany, with Italy, with countries right across Europe, mm. because those gangs are operating right across through other countries. It's a cross-border okay. crime. When do you... and that's why you need the law enforcement. Yeah. What, Sorry, kind of, what kind of time frame are we looking at? Because I think a lot of people have heard many, many years of government ministers saying we're putting more money in to tackle this problem, and all they see is the numbers going up. Yeah, so I think the, the um, what I'm not going to do is what Rishi Sunak did and just throw slogans at everybody and promise everything will be solved in 12 months, which is what he did. Of course, it didn't work. So and you're not setting yourself instead a target things, of a year instead then? Things, instead, things got worse. What we want to do is make substantial progress and to do so as far and as fast as possible. So we're working already, even as we go through the winter months, we are working on this substantial increase in law enforcement cooperation. We've got new work with Germany underway about how you actually stop some of the supply chains because we know that boats and engines for example are being shipped through Germany we should be trying to stop those boats before they reach so again the end at the end of all of this right what's your aim here what do you want do you want to stop the gangs from operating do you want people to stop drowning in the channel or do you want to stop brown people being in the country do you want to stop asylum seekers coming here to claim asylum, right? Nobody wants to talk about the ends with which they want to go to. I don't give a shit whether we stop asylum seekers coming here. I would like, I'm quite frankly very happy to have asylum seekers in my country because, you know, I think that we should be welcoming of people who are fleeing persecution. I know that's a bland opinion. But if you actually want the, the gangs to stop and if you want the people to stop drowning in the channel, you have to give them a reason to be able to come here without having to rely on gangs to get it. It's very simple. The French when coast will in the, the first electorate place. see a reduction in numbers? Well, we want to see progress made as far and as fast as possible. And and I totally understand that the, the question you're raising, Susanna, but I'm just going to keep saying we, what I think people want to see is us making progress rather than simply just doing the slogans as the previous government did. So the, the Prime Minister said he wants to, us to make significant progress. That's why you need okay. the law enforcement in place and you need the increased returns in place. And we've got to have much faster asylum decision making because that's just not happening at all at the moment. Or it has, sorry, wasn't happening, okay. and we have substantially increased can the I asylum even, decision making can, through okay. the summer. Can we even say that by the next general election you'll have the numbers down? Oh, of course we we look. Nobody should be making these dangerous crossings. So no. of course we want to okay. reduce these crossings as far and as fast as okay. possible. So by the next because general no election, one should be making okay. those dangerous journeys. Um, I just want to pick up a couple of other things while we have you. Um, the budget. OK, so literally no discussion about safe routes. Not a single question from Susanna Reid there was about the potential for safe routes. None at all. None at all. Like, the Vet Cooper, 
blatantly saying we are going to take every step that we can to reduce the number of crossings without mentioning safe routes whatsoever and wasn't even questioned on it by Susanna Reid. No question at all. Just will the numbers come down? You say you have a deterrent, yet do you have one? The Tories had one. That's it. When will the numbers come down? That's the only discussion that we had. And Susanna Reid is supposed to be one of the good ones as well. Now, when it comes to the issue of how do we actually solve this problem, one of the only good people in our media kind of sphere who talks about this at length and with, you know, fact on her side is Zoe Gardner, who was on Turn Left this evening, but I pulled up a clip that she posted herself on YouTube from a discussion she had with Talk TV, Z and Collins, talking about this very issue. And I think it's worth watching. Uh, no, it doesn't, it shouldn't matter whether you're left wing, right wing, whatever your reason or whatever your um, assessment is as to why people cross the channel, everybody, I think, agrees. We don't want to see people in boats crossing the channel. It is incredibly dangerous, and we've seen some horrendous stories this year to highlight that. Uh, there are clear demonstrable security issues as well. Um, it's uh, an incredibly expensive process when it gets to this end. Uh, and of course, it means we have this uh, sort of limbo policy of, I don't know, hundreds of thousands of people potentially hanging around, stuck in hotels with no status whatsoever. There's, it's a lose-lose, whatever way you look at it at the moment, and it's a complete mess. I think we all agree on that. But is smashing the gangs really the, the answer to solving the problem? Well, I think you'd be hard pressed to find anybody who isn't directly speaking for the government and therefore has to support this policy, who would suggest that this is anything new, anything we haven't heard before, anything we haven't been doing for years, and anything that's really going to make a very big difference. I mean, I think you summed it up brilliantly just, just now. You can arrest one smuggler, but as long as there is a refugee with no solution and a closed border, then there will be another smuggler mm. who comes along to fulfill that service. And we all know that. Um, and as you said very clearly, nobody seems to benefit from this situation. Nobody seems to benefit, certainly not refugees who have no safe way to come to the UK and are dying and drowning in the channel or risking their lives and having horrendous journeys to undertake at the hands of smugglers. And certainly the UK public don't uh, benefit from this situation either, do we? We're very unhappy yeah. with seeing this chaos on our shores. So we have to ask ourselves, why has this continued for so long? Because this is the same policy that's been in place for decades, yep. isn't it? Because somebody does benefit. And that is what we need to remember. This news today is a perfect illustration of it. Another £150 million pounds to who? To the private surveillance firms that are selling us drones, fences, infrared cameras. They've been doing this for decades and they are making an absolute killing. It was reported in the papers today that Graham King, who owns the company called Clear Springs that runs the asylum hotels, is on track to become a billionaire. Every single time, super, super easy way of finding out where the interests in a certain story lie. Just follow the money. Follow the money of which private sector contractor is getting money from the government to fund these things. Super simple, super easy. Why is there a desire to want to get asylum seekers into hotels whilst we austerity takes money out of the asylum processing system? Oh Well, turns out someone who has links to the Conservative Party was making a financial gain out of that particular set of policy. Really not difficult. Who stands to gain from all of this new border security command funding that Keir Starmer keeps going on about? Who's going to gain from this? Oh, it's the private security firms who have links to the Labour government. What a surprise. What a surprise. And nobody gains. Ironically, the smuggling gangs are still going to gain money out of this because they're not having their business model undermined. As she says, you know, there's going to be another person who comes along after you've gotten rid of one to replace them because the demand is still there. Just like, you know, with the war on drugs, same things happen there. You get rid of one ring, another one pops up because there's still the demand for the narcotic in the first place. Super, super simple. Always just follow the money. Super easy way of getting your mind around one of these issues. This new government is doing the same thing as the last government. Our conversation is trapped between should we try to stop the make, make migrants disappear by stopping them being able to access smugglers and dinghies, or should we try to make them disappear by sending some of them away to a dictatorship in Africa? And in neither case will you ever make people disappear. And what is 
fundamentally lacking from our conversation about this is the angle that says, okay, this is a reality. It is a manageable number of people. We're talking about 30,000 people who came to the UK in the last year on these boats. We could provide a safe way for 30,000 people to reach us. It would be a heck of a lot less expensive than this latest deal to provide another set of cameras um, on the border that won't make any difference whatsoever. And then what we should be doing with those people is looking at what our needs are as a country. So we have huge needs. We are an aging population. We're a shrinking population. And she's 100% correct there as well, right? And the, the reason why both governments' rhetoric has been the same, whether or not it's taking on the gangs or whether or not it's trying to dissuade migrants from coming here at all, is undermined twice by, first of all, the fact that the migration problem isn't going away. There is too much geopolitical instability. There will always be refugees. And we can't just keep shoveling the problem onto other countries that we don't like to avoid having to deal with the issue ourselves. And the numbers aren't even that high anyway. And of course, because our government's main concern isn't do want we stop the boat crossings, do we save people's lives in the channel, the issue the government cares about is are there going to be fewer asylum seekers? Do we have fewer brown people in the country? That is the fulcrum on which their idea of policy lies, not how many lives do we save or how many smuggling gangs do we stop. We need people to come and work on our farms, to work in our care homes, to work in our health sector, to work in construction, to work in um, services and hospitality. We need people in all of those areas. How can we match the people who need to come here with the needs of our country for immigration? And how can we start to look at this whole question completely differently in a way that takes away the powers of the gangs, that takes away the huge contracts to surveillance country uh, companies that doesn't do us any good, mm. and that saves the lives of the people who are desperate to come here? So what we need to do is look at the people who really need to travel and put them at the forefront of our immigration policy. If you want to control numbers, there like, people on small boats make up 5% of immigration. And on top of that as well is that lots of people have genuine claims. 80% of asylum claims from people who arrive via irregular means are accepted because they are, they are genuine refugees with no other method to get here in the first place. They have to arrive via irregular means to claim asylum in the first place. Therefore, without the safe routes, they will take the boats because they're legitimate claims, hence our acceptance rate being so high. The numbers are also quite low in terms of overall migration anyway, if all you care about is headline numbers of migrants. And on top of that, if you're looking at the overall burden of dealing with the asylum-seeking issue, the migrant crisis as people like to deem it, we take far lower than our share per capita than other countries in Europe do. Germany, France, Netherlands all have done much more than us at taking on their fair share of the burden of having to accept asylum seekers because of instability in the global south. We are not somehow more generous than Europe. We are far less generous in sharing our country with asylum seekers than other countries are. We have, as have been for a very long time, not taking our fair share in, specifically because we're an island, because we had a body of water separating us from the European mainland. Under the European Union's Dublin Agreement, people who did arrive here, who did take a dangerous journey across the channel to get here, could then get sent back to their country that they first arrived by, or one where they actually had a family connection to if they didn't have one here. But Brexit got rid of the Dublin Agreement. We now have no way of getting rid of these people. If we actually wanted to and didn't want to take in our fair share. And now we don't have that agreement. We are being forced to accept our fair share, which we should be doing already. But because we are so draconian on how we look at the asylum system and how we look at accepting people who are genuine refugees, we'd have no idea how to deal with it and we won't, we won't open up the safe routes. And all we have is a big crisis entirely of our own making, from terrible policy, from terrible rhetoric, to ridiculous Brexit nonsense that we have caused on ourselves. Hey there, if you enjoyed the video, make sure that you like and leave a comment that helps the video out in the algorithm. If you subscribe and ring the bell, it'll let you know when I go live. I stream every day on YouTube and Twitch. You can also follow all of my socials down in the description. And if you want to support me in a more financial manner, there's a join button for membership to just 99p to be a member on YouTube, as well as a patron. And there's some merch there as well. And hopefully I'll catch you on the next video. Take care.